to Zines and Roger. This is episode 37. My name is Rosina and this is a crochet podcast vlog. I'm going to talk to you about what I've been up to and I think this time I've been gone for three weeks and that's because it's been the summer holidays. The boys are now back at school so I'm going to try and get everything um, back to normal. I've got a lot of catching up to do. Um, I've got plans for so many things and it's not until you have six weeks where you are spending loads of time with two um, dependents that you realise you just can't fit it all in. So it's catch up time. It doesn't mean to say that I've not been doing anything because I have. Um, I always crochet, I crochet every day, even if that's one row of a project or something like that. I need to at least do a little bit each day to say I've done it. Um, I don't know what you're like, whether or not you sort of, you can put it away for a week, but if, if I were to not crochet for a, more than like three days or something, I'd probably start getting a bit jittery, which is weird. Is it like, is that, a, is that like a crochet addiction? Is that wrong? Have I? I don't know. Um, a very long time ago, when I was too stupid to know any better, in my teens and my early twenties, I used to smoke. I don't... literally it's been 15 years and I have not... I don't partake. Um, but I think I've probably swapped one addiction for another. Right, let's crack on. I think I've got some lunch still stuck in my tooth. We'll work it out as it goes along. It's probably a bit of lettuce. It's gone. Apologies. Right. Oh, I have forgotten my main finished object. It's not here. Um, I'll go and get it one moment. Could I forget? I finished my crochet fade. Crochet your fade, which last episode was a work in progress. I think I was only I was working in the third colour then, or the fourth. Don't remember. But it's done now. It is done. And it is enormous, enormously long. It's nearly three metres long. And it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Look at that my favourite bit, my absolute favourite bit. And it is by a designer who on Instagram and Ravelry is My Square Hat. Or um, she hasn't told me whether or not she's a Julm, a Julm or a Yulm or, a, or something else. I'm so sorry. Um, I test knit this, test crocheted this. I don't know why I said that. And I've written a blog post about it because I wanted to take some pictures and show them off because it's so beautiful. It, um, all the, so there's more information on the blog post. I love, the, I just love this so much. It's a beautiful shawl. I shall be wearing it probably as a scarf, thusly, and um, wearing it quite a lot over the next few months, I should imagine. It's four ply, I don't know what to say about it. It's four ply, all of it, all of it's like uh, hand dyed yarns, and I did go through them all last time, so I, I was sort of reluctant to go through them this time, and also, um, I've written, I've written the list of all of the, the yarns 
on the blog post, which I shall link to in the description in the in the description box there'll be a link to the show notes blah 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 they're all they're all different it's it's but but they work I mean they work I think they work they just work um they it's a they fade together I wouldn't say this was a seamless fade it's not because you can see uh where where they go together um but that sometimes it's the point you want it to be seamless and um just fade from one to the other to the other to the other with great subtlety and um avoiding the fact that you can see oh there's color one there's color two there's color three in a kind of jarring way much like these three for example these um i think fade beautifully together and then I've got some nice jarring ones on the end that just go boom in your face but that's that doesn't bother me because I, I think this middle section actually worried me I was a bit I was worried it was going to be too boring when I first started all of, you know when I first saw all of these come together I thought oh it's a bit pale and pastely that's not really that's not really my cup of tea and I and it really clashed with this one at the end, which is um, by Somerset Yarns. Um, but when I brought in a Somerset Yarns one on the other end as well, it kind of brought it together um, and balanced it and made me happy. So we have some sort of more outrageous ones on either end with the subtlety in the middle. And I like that. This works well for me. Very pleased. The pattern is out. It's out now. It's been released. Last time I talked about it, it hadn't been released. I think I had said that I was testing it as a as a pre-release pattern. Um, but now it, it has been released. So if you wanted to get yourself a copy, then it's on Ravelry and I'll link, blah, blah. Um, there is, um, there's a, a written pattern a chart and photographs and um, all the usual gubbins that you need um, in order to make yourself a crochet garment or accessory in this case. Um, I just love it and I love the fact that you can kind of throw anything together and it works. Um, the fact that like this one is silk, this one is blue faced Leicester and this one is like, I don't know what that one is, superwash merino. It's not like, it, they're not screaming at you that they're all different and they don't, don't put me next to you, I don't want to go next to you. None of that, it's all fine. All absolutely fine. But this one, this one for me does sort of say, I think it's my least favourite in the shawl, although actually on a skein and probably in knitting it would be beautiful. But you know that thing when you crochet something, it's kind of, the colours become blocky and, um, I don't know what the word is, just kind of blocky and there. There's no kind of nice stripes or blending, They're all it's all cubic and strange. I don't know if you know what I mean. Um, speckled, speckled yarns seem to work better in crochet than, than a skein that has chunks of colour. A lot of that's to do with the stitches, but a lot of that is to do with, is just, just crochet and, and hand dyed yarns. Um, I realise now that I don't really know what I'm talking about and I hadn't prepared myself for talking about that so I'll shut up. But that is my, my finished object number one and I'm very happy. If I haven't said something and you want to know then give us a shout or go and read the blog post or get in touch with Jewel and she will answer your queries I am sure. Right, that is that one. Number two I have two finish shawls that are my design this time and in fact I've, I haven't seen the ends of this one so let's do that and this is Harvest Moon 
which I think is still going to be called Harvest Moon because I had said that it was a working title, but it's stuck in my head now. So it may as well remain Harvest Moon. Um, I've still got lots of ends. And last time I showed it to you, it was a little bit different. In episode 36, I've shown this shawl and it has a different border and a different colour border. And as I was showing up, I just couldn't get Laura Ashley out of my head. It just looked a bit kind of 80s, but not in a good way. Um, which is... I can remember when it was probably the mid-90s and there was not any heinous crime worse than 80s fashion. Um, and I can, I know, I think probably as a teenager, I remember thinking there is no way that the 80s will ever be welcome again in any fashion trends. But as we know, these things come round again. And now 80s, the thing I loathed when I was a teenager, probably just the 1980s in general, um, it's come round again, isn't it? And I, I love it. I love all things 80s. What's that about? Um, nostalgia for my childhood? I don't know. Anyway, um, but there is such a thing as um, cool 80s stuff and chintzy twee, I suppose. And I figured that this shawl was a bit twintzy. Twintzy? Oh, there you go. Twintzy G, I was going to say. Um, chintzy twee. A bit Laura Ashley. I loved Laura Ashley at the time, but I don't anymore. Not today, but I think probably I should say that I'm not going to set that in stone. Right, I haven't sewn in all the ends, but I figured that you're probably getting bored of me talking about it and not showing. So here we have a crescent shawl with the two stripes. And last time it had a cream border. It was quite shallow and very um, busy, almost too busy, whereas this one's Busy in a better way. There we go. Ooh, that looks pretty. Much better if you ask me. I can't can't see what I'm showing you now. The border is very similar, but not the same as um, the emergence of spring. Oh, I picked up my needle again and. Um, picked up the wrong one, it's too, too small a needle. Because um, I want them to be, I was going to say thematically the same, cousins if you will in the shawl world. Um, so the link there is the border. But it's not the same because um, I sort of nicked the very edges of the border for the for attempt number one but I found there were too many pointy bits and I didn't like it going pointy 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 it was annoying me so now I've got point 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 not pointy pointy point and it it's brilliant it's brilliant it's much better um I much prefer it and there's still lots of ends I'm saying in here so this is a small two colour version but it uses three skeins and no I haven't written on the pattern yet um, still playing catch up uh, I have got a lot of stuff on I've probably bitten off more than I can chew to be honest but give me a couple of weeks and I will have hopefully sort of balanced myself out a bit made things a bit better Where well, I've got any more ends I think there's one in the middle somewhere what do you reckon? that's so much better so much better um brown in real life is my like one of my favorite colors but i do understand that sort of using it to showcase work sometimes it, it might not be the best shade to use especially when normally all your other work is really in your face and colorful so 
If I could turn the clock back and get a really in your face pink to replace that brown, or have it, yeah, have, and, and then have the pink as the border. So it's blue, blue and pink with the pink border. That would look awesome. That would look amazing. Um, but I haven't done that. And I've made another, I've made a three colour version of this. So I'm not making a, I'm not making a third shawl. Not just so I can play around with colour. Um, number one, I haven't got the time. Number two, I can't afford it. Right, that'll do for sewing ends for now. So, this is Harvest Moon number one. So, if you fancy yourself a two colour um, shawl, sure. I'll try and schedule it in to start the writing next week, but we shall see. I've got another pattern to write up first that takes precedence. precedence. And this one is not blocked or has ends sewn in or anything like that. But it is the three colour version. The three colour version is much bigger. Um, much, much bigger. So I don't know if it, oh, it probably would go around nicely like this, wouldn't it? Bearing in mind it's not even blocked yet and already ginormous. Oh, quite nice. Isn't that interesting though? What what um, difference blocking makes? Because with the blocking one, there's a load. There was a load of light shining through there, and I didn't go for an aggressive block either. But I really like that. I'm so glad I changed that border. Again, doesn't really. I mean, choose whatever colours you want and go. You could go bonkers, couldn't you? Or, or subtle, or subtle, whatever. Do whatever you like. I prefer the other one. Um, purely because actually, it's funny. I, ch I chose colours that sort of said autumn, without being cliche autumn. Um, but I'm not sure I'm that kind of person. I'm going to have to sort of rethink what a jazzy autumn might be. Hey ho. So that's a, that's uh, the three colour version, but it's four, four hanks, four skeins. I think the correct term is hank, not skein. But I don't like the word hank, so I say skein, which goes against my pedant ways. So they're finished, and yeah, um, hopefully um, I will uh, write those up at some point next week, and certainly the week after I'll sort of be telling myself off if I haven't done it yet. I think those are all the finished things I've got. I've got some whips though. Yay! This morning was um, my monthly craft group thing. And um, I took three things, because I wasn't sure what I was going to make. One didn't even start. And then two things, I, did, like, I focused the first hour on one project and the second hour on another project. The second hour was this one, and I'll show you this one because it's in grabbing distance. And it's this. Yes, I'm still making it. No, I don't want to be making it anymore. Um, I have now got just this much to go on the bobbles. Um, I've been, I did like this morning, I did that and one other side. So it's a little bit of progress, but it took a long time. These bobbles are. I'm bored of them. Bored. Um, but I, re I mean, obviously I could get them done so quickly if I just did it, but the, the feeling's not right. I don't, I just don't want to do it. <laughs> but also that's another thing I want to get done. 
hopefully next week's videoing job will be the tutorial. And if I can get that done, that's a big tick off my list of jobs to do because I promised that a long time ago. Um, but we're almost there, almost at the finishing line. Ugh, I don't even know what I'm going to do with it once it's done. Um, then the other thing I worked on, which I'm really pleased with, like, re well, <laughs> I made a boo boo at the start. Oh, I can't get it out. I'm scared if I pull it out too quickly, all the stitches will come off. Da da da! It's knitting! Um, <laughs> this is the furthest I have gotten with this blasted hat that I failed at so many times. Beautiful neat rib, look at that. I'm thrilled, but you're supposed to knit it in the round and I forgot. Um, but I reckon I'm not making mistakes because it's not in the round. I think that was sort of throwing me a little bit. And so actually it's much easier to do it like this, but it's a hat. So what I'm going to do is do the rib for the brim and then once that's the length I want it to be, the depth I want it to be, then I shall do it in the round and it will be stockinette stitch for the main part of the hat. And I've heard you can do that. It's a thing. Um, I saw on, I think it was Starcraft on Instagram, they have tips every week. And one of the tips was if you struggle with starting things off in the round, don't start off in the round. Start off straight and then join it a bit later when everything's a bit easier. So that's what I'm going to do. So that's my first knitting project. And yes, I'm knitting continental style. I did all that this morning in an hour, isn't that amazing? That's loads. Um, it's this. And I haven't got a zoomy camera, apologies. So if I do that, then it's just gonna be blurry, probably. Um, Ching fibers, double knit. Don't know the colorway, um, apart from the fact it's beautiful. So I'm, I'm going to do a deep, this is, um, knit two, purl two, and I want it to be about, I don't know, about that deep, maybe a bit bigger, do you reckon, for the brim, maybe deep enough so that I can fold it in half, fold it a bit and it will look all right, I don't know. I've never knit a hat before, I've never knit anything other than a scarf before, so, wish me luck, this is the furthest I've got and I'm really happy. Um, and I'm dreading what's going to happen when I start trying to join it. And, um, and this morning I got sidetracked and I realised that I'd purled about eight in a row and had to be shown tinking, which I love, I love that word, tink, it's knit backwards, amazing. Um, although I still can't do it on my own, um, but uh, lifesaver. Somebody else did it for me, um, but I could see what they would. I was watching them do it, and it, it's like magic. Um, super. Uh, my other whip is not a whip because it's not even started technically. I swatched this up for a commission where uh, somebody got in touch with me asking me to come up with ideas for a shawl and so I came up with three ideas one was commissioned and two weren't because they only wanted one and this was one of the other two that wasn't commissioned and this is my swatch um, and I was, I'm going to start this for this month because the grocery girls they, who are a knitting podcast they are doing a crochet along this month, the month of September, and so I thought I would crochet along and make this shawl because it's dead easy. Um, I hope this bit was dead easy to make, 
because essentially all it is is uh, one treble, one double, one treble, one double, one treble, one double, all along, with a little bit of shaping to make it a triangle, and then crab stitch border is the idea. And I was sort of thinking, oh, what can I do that's quick? And I guess, you know, chunkier yarn. And I haven't got any super chunky or anything, or even chunky, I've just got Aran weight. Or, well, I've, I, I think this is the same. So I've got three colours, and they're not, like, they're not my usual colours, but they go quite nicely together. And I've got the right quantities, I think, to make a shawl and probably make it quite quickly because it's quite a simple shawl. Um, whether or not I write it up in the end, I, I don't know. Um, but I've got that much of... This one's going to be my first colour, which is the Starcraft Aran, probably Plum, I think the name is. This is Paintbox Yarn, simply Aran. Um, yeah, I don't know what colour it is. Colour 253. And then this one is I Love This Yarn. And it's a size 4, but I don't know what that is other than... there. It's like, well it must be, it's sort of similar. It's fair, they're fairly, fairly similar. Probably not, if you were to scrutinise, not exactly the same thickness, but they are jolly close. So I have 100 grams of this one, 100 grams plus this of this one, and then this must be 200 grams or thereabouts probably. It's 199 grams. And this one's from America, um, and it was sent to me by Melody, the Melody Crochet Podcast. I don't know, at the beginning of the year sometime, but I finally found something for it to go in, which is far, far, I was going to say, I don't know what I was going to say, but fabulous it was going to come out of. So I'm hoping to start that soon, but actually tonight and tomorrow, all day tomorrow, I've got to work up a commission that I completely forgot about. Well, I didn't forget about it. I was looking forward to making it and I'd started making it. But what I thought was that the deadline was October. But when I just double checked, um, turned out that it was the 9th of September. And today is the 5th? Or I think the deadline's Monday, whatever day. It's the, it's the 6th today. I think Monday might be the 10th. That's the deadline. Whoops. If I can get it done all by Friday, I can post it on Saturday and boom, job done. Um, so I shouldn't really be recording this um, because I should be working on that commission that uh, I almost forgot about. Phew! So that's what I've been up to. Uh, but I do, don't, don't go away because I've got plenty of stuff to talk about, including this. Um, but I'm just going to double check that I have done everything I need to do so far. Um, uh, I've got here that, do you remember the C to C bag? The hodgepodge C to C bag. The hodgepodge C to C bag that I made last week. Um, there's a blog post up now as well if you um, wanted to find out how to make one. It's in the cupboard, I can't be bothered to get it, I'm sorry. The colourful jazzy C to C bag I made. Blog post. Um, which I will link to. Um, so now I can move on to the C to C cow, I think. And what I want to make in the future. I've, I've got myself in a bit of an excitable mood because this morning I've decided I'm going to make a jumper and I want to make it by Yarndale which is the 29th of September and as I've just said it's the 6th of September um, I want to finish uh, so I need to make that make this shawl in September 
Uh, apparently make some socks in September because there's a sock along. Although I think I've got until October to do that. I hope. I want to, which has got nothing to do with, uh, I don't know why I mentioned it because I haven't talked about that at all. Um, but you'll know if you watch the Crochet Circle podcast or cro 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 Crochet Luna uh, about the sock along. Um, scribble out sock along. Talk about it another time. Um, I was listing. I want to make that shawl. I want to make. I've got to make a commission. I've got to make another commission. I want to make that hat. I've got some C to C ideas as well. But this as well. Can I make this jumper by um, the 29th of September, please? I don't know if you can see this. It's called the Mount Tremper sweater. And it is by Two of Wands. It's a free pattern and it's um, a stripy jumper. And I want I want to make it, I really want to make it. I, I, I saw it a while back and I was like, that's nice, I'd like to make that. And then I stumbled across it again a couple of weeks ago and I was like, yeah, I'll bump that up a bit higher up the list. And, um, and then, I don't know, three or four days ago, I was just sort of looking at jumpers and stuff, thinking if I want to, um, well, the idea was, was that I would like to design some jumpers. And if I want to design some jumpers, then I need to make more of other people's so that I can understand construction and, and fit and stuff like that. And so I started looking at more jumpers and that and I saw this again and yeah now I, I don't just sort of go yeah I'll make that I really want to make it so I think I'll order the yarn today I've decided what colours I want Oops, sorry I've decided the colours I want and I'm gonna go for it it's horizontal stripes though I'm gonna have to change where those go because horizontal stripes across the boobs are not flattering so I think I'm gonna have to adjust them to um, make it so it's not quite so um, curve enhancing. I don't know. <sighs> I really want to make it. Really want to make it. I've got some prioritising to do, haven't I? Um, it's because the kids have gone back and. All of a sudden, I'm working out how I can fit all these things in, and sort of, it's almost like um, what is it? Bottlenecked, <laughs> bottleneck traffic jam. But I've come out the other side. We'll see. I'll sort myself out because at the moment I'm just thinking out loud, really. So take everything I'm saying with a pinch of salt, um, because I might not mean it. <laughs> I might change my mind about certain things. Anyway, so the Grocery Girls, going back to that, have a cow that started... It's a very informal crochet along, because they're knitters, and um, I guess it's just sort of a bit of fun, really. But I'd like to join in that. Uh, and something else they said, which was interesting, and I've forgotten exactly word for word what they said, but I'm going to put a timestamp in the show notes and with the episode that's in it and I urge you to go and watch just like literally one minute of um, their episode um, so that um, I don't know what I'm trying to say uh, essentially it's about being nice because although we're not everybody's cup of tea are we Everybody's liked and disliked, blah, blah, blah. But, um, the grocery girls put it more um, eloquently, probably, than I'm, I'm about to try. No, I'm not about to try, than I might. Oh, crikey. Um, it, they hit the nail on the head, go and watch. Right. So, I've got a cow coming up as well, 
and it is for corner to corner crochet which I love almost as much as granny um, I've worked out some details but not all I know that I want to start it on the sun, the first Sunday of October so about a month away which gives you loads of time to sort yourself out um, if you would like to join in then a month gives you plenty of time to work out what you're going to make I'm just checking what date the Sunday is it's the, it's the 7th the 7th of October okay the um, 7th of October has been chosen as the date <coughs> because um, that is when I can officially release Havana Nights as an independent pattern I am not saying that you have to make Havana Nights, it's not a Havana Nights crochet along but because it's a C to C and because I love it um, I'd like the two to coincide so on the 7th of October I'll be releasing this and if you want to make it you can buy it and I'll probably uh, if I've got I've got some C to C patterns for sale in Ravelry and I will put all of my C to C patterns at a discount throughout the duration of the cow if you wanted to buy one of them then you get it at a discount rate because you're taking part in the in the crochet along um, but you know you're under no obligation to use one of my patterns you can use whatever pattern you want and I've um, got a C to C board on Pinterest so you can go and find other people's designs you can find free patterns you can find inspiration and in all that gubbins um, and also I have got it in my head to come up with a design a small thing a small project that I'll film as a tutorial to go along with the, the cal and also I'm not 100% certain yet because I haven't got the yarn but a yarn company got in touch with me recently asking for a collaboration and I was like yeah sure do you fancy tying it in with the with the cow and they seemed really up for it so and I haven't got as I said I haven't got the yarn but I think all is a go with them giving me yarn to come up with a free pattern that will be a C to C cowl and one prize winner from the, at the end of the cowl will get the yarn, the same yarn as a prize and so far I think that that's the only prize I've been offered um, well I kind of sort of suggested it and they were like yeah sure why not and then patterns might, some, you know, a couple of my patterns like I did with the granny cow and if anybody else wants to donate a prize get in touch because the granny cow exploded, it went nuts. So I'm hoping that this one will too. Fingers crossed. Because I think it's a fun one. And I think um, C to C is a stitch that, um, it's a bit like Lord of the Rings. You've either read it or you plan on reading it in the future. Um, C to C, um, you've done C to C and you love it. Because everybody loves, everybody loves talking. Um, you've either done C to C in which case you love it, or you're planning on doing C to C. Uh, oh, that was a terrible analogy. Um, I, th I hope you get my point. <laughs> it's a bit like the magic knot as well. No, it's not. People that haven't done a magic knot don't trust it. People that do use it use it all the time. That's got nothing to do with anything. What am I like? Right. I think that's it actually. 
Um, so the cowl will start on the 7th of October and I'm planning on it lasting for six weeks which should give you ample time to make most things um, but I'm not going to be massively strict about the deadline and we'll probably keep it open for a bit longer. I haven't even come up with a, a finished date other than the middle of November. I don't know what the middle of November looks like. We could, I was I could say the 18th of November could be the close, 17th or 18th of November could be the end date, but I probably wouldn't close it until the 19th or 20th, something like that. But as, as like last time, there will be prizes for Instagram, at least two Ravelry chatter groups, chatter? A chatter thread and a finished object thread. I will choose one of my favourites and there'll be an Instagram winner and I'm going to sneeze and oh, no, it's gone. Uh, yeah. If I've forgotten anything and, or if, if I've not made a jot of sense then let me know and I will try and answer it in a bit more uh, sensible manner. So that's, that is, that is me. I've got to go now. Sort myself out. Have a cup of tea. So I hope you're okay. Oh, I've sunk right, right down low. I hope you're all right. Um, and I will see you again next time. Uh, cheerio, bye. -bye. <laughs>